What's going on, guys? We are back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, this week's going to be something a little different. We are actually, we have Alex back on. He was one of our first episodes. And we wanted to kind of get him back on and yeah. talk about how he's been in the recent market. Market's been fucking tough. It's been brutal. I hear about it every day. And Alex has had some crazy days. And then we wanted to kind of hear from him and how he's doing. So kind of to start, I guess, Alex, if you want to take away and talk about how you made a million dollars in a fucking week, I think that'd be a pretty cool place to start. Yeah. So there's a lot of shit leading up to that, right? So right now, this is being recorded on July 6th, 2021. Exactly one year from today, we were at the pandemic, the height of the pandemic. The market was going crazy. The stock market was tanking. Everyone thought this magical virus was going to kill everyone. Retirement accounts were going to zero. Everyone was broke. Everyone had no job. All of a sudden, the most lucrative job in the world became the stock market, right? So a year ago today is when we had literally the most amount. I would say it was the peak of the stock market COVID boom. And in 2019, the market was different. In 2020, the market was different. And in 2021, the market was different. You know, what worked in 2020 didn't work in 2019, 2021, et cetera. Uh, I feel like a lot of people made a lot of dumb money in 2020, whether it was cryptocurrency, whether it was fucking Dogecoin, whether it was trading, whether whatever it was. I feel like a lot of money, a lot of people that entered the market got went on easy street. Everything was really easy. You could, on one day, you could buy a stock and it'll go up 500%. The next day, the stock would tank 50%. The longs would make a shitload of money. The shorts yeah. would make a shitload of money. And as long as you pretty much didn't blow up, you could have made money every single day in that market. And that was incredible. I know a lot of people that made a lot of money. You know, I did very well for myself considering just working one hour a day, you know, sticking to the MIC process. I think last year I made a little bit over a million dollars, which is crazy because I only traded one hour a day. <laughs> so the return for that amount of money is absolutely ridiculous. It, it, it was just crazy. And the reason why, you know, I was focused on that is because I started with a $30,000 account and I wanted to prove to every single person that was in our community, if I could do it for one hour a day, for $35,000, you could do it the same way. And all you have to do is walk away. People don't walk away. Anyway, so a lot of people made a lot of easy money. And here we are at the middle of 2021. And it seems like everything has changed. The first quarter of the year is when, you know, cryptocurrency went crazy. Uh, GameStop and AMC started running for the first time. And a lot of people that made that easy money in 2020 all of a sudden felt like the king of the world in 2021, the first quarter, you know, people were getting rich. Literally people were getting fucking rich for doing shit that you shouldn't be getting rich for. Right. And all of a sudden, maybe mid or like February, let's say March, yeah. April time, yeah. Yeah. cryptocurrency crash, GameStop and AMC crash. And all of a sudden the market changed. Right. So, I mean, this market right now, the current market that we're in is extremely difficult. The reason why it's extremely difficult at this very moment is there are traps left and right. You think a stock is broken, out of nowhere, it's zombies. You think a stock is very strong, out of nowhere, you get a death candle and stop. Yeah. So for me, I found it very difficult in this past couple of weeks to be trading or trading size because I cannot have the conviction. And I cannot have the belief that these stocks are going to trade organically, naturally, and follow common price action. Because they're not following common price action, I'm very hesitant and I'm very patient and I'm only trying to look for the best plays. And hey, I'm not out here trying to make $10,000 a day. If I could walk away with $1,000 a day or $2,000 a day on a slow day, yeah. that's still going to be half a million dollars, you know? So what do you guys think about the market now? How you? I know Harry's killing it. I know James doing well. So what is your take on it, guys? Um, Harry, you can go ahead. Yeah, I think for me, it was just like being very, very patient and just making sure that I got a good entry because a lot of the times you can get caught up in the chop, like especially like for me, like since I'm logging and like, I mean, like just like today on on whatever stock it was that I was talking about with Bao, I was like, yeah, definitely going to stuff into 650. Like I could have probably shorted that if I wanted to, but 
Um, I mean, as for the most part, it's, it's just really been patient and just sticking to your risk, but also making sure like, cause I know that I need to get a good entry in order to feel really, really like confident. Like if you, if you get a, an entry and let's say you're in at seven bucks and automatically you're at 720, 730 right away, you know, like you have a bit of confidence in that trade. So I love trades like that, but when we're potting around like seven, like 798, and we're not really bouncing off that level, that's the time for me to be like, okay, this obviously isn't going to work and we need to, to go lower. And usually I've been like, sometimes I've found myself like looking at stocks, like even on a day like today, where we had like BLIN at like 14. And I was like, guys, I need this at 12. Like, I can't be long in this at 14, 14 plus. Like I need this way, way, way lower. And then, um, I mean, that's just how I feel. Like as long as I'm patient, then I'm going to always like do fine in any market. How do you stay patient? What do you, what is it that you do to be able to get these entries? Because in my opinion, a proper entry, a good entry is like a fucking cheat code in the market. You could have <laughs> the worst trade ever, but if you have the proper entry, that is the difference between walking away profitable or unprofitable. So I want to kind of hear how you do it, bro. Cause your entries are fucking sexy. I, I, what I like to do is like, well, on a lot of, I mean, it depends on what setup it is, but for me, I, I just, I, I always picture myself like, okay, you lost this way, like a year ago. So why are you, why are you doing that? Like, for example, on that current stock where I got it at seven bucks, like the old me would be trying to chase the old me would be trying to get it at like the top of the range, the old me, but now like, it's just, I've, I literally got fucked so many times doing the wrong thing. That's like, I know that I need to wait. Like I literally sit at a chart and I'm like, no, I need to wait. I need to wait. I need. And to if wait. it doesn't get there, you don't take the trade. I think that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. hundred percent. No. Like if it, if it hits like maybe, maybe like, you know, 20 cents, like above where I'm looking at, then I'm like, no, can't get it. Like just didn't get to where I wanted it. That's it. But I know I can't chase it. Cause if I start fucking chasing, I'm just going to get stuffed on, you know? I think that's why it's easier for me to kind of not be chasing like an idiot is because I know like, okay, like the end game is like a stuff and for these stocks to go lower. So that's You're kind right. of how I feel. Harry, you and said you, it to me on the phone today. You said there, I forget it was MRIN or whatever stock you wanted. You were like, I wanted it at X and then I, I wanted a little bit higher and it would have been okay. But I knew if I started chasing it out of my comfort zone, it would have, you wouldn't have been happy with the trade, even if you won. So yeah. I, that's what makes you a fucking savant at longing, I'm especially just, in longing. Dude. I'm just really hard on myself. Like, even if I make money, like, I'm going to feel like shit. Cause I'm like, no, you weren't patient. You weren't. That's not the right way to trade. You that's just trade it. the first hour, right, Harry? After the first hour, you're gone. Yeah. I mean, recently I've been trading the first hour. I, I've been trading the first two or three hours, I think, because like sometimes I'll have a line. And it just won't get there in the first hour because there's just so much commotion and so much action going on. So I'm like, okay, I can wait and watch. And then, um, but usually I'd say at around like noonish market time, that's, I'm going to be wrapped up at that time. That makes day. sense to me because that's the middle of the zombie time. So you're capitalizing on the yeah. morning momentum and you're capitalizing on the zombie moves. That's awesome, bro. And I'm, I love to see it because, you know, there's a lot of short biased traders in the room, but whenever I see Harry and Austin agree on something, yeah. it's like when me and Bao used to agree on short setup. And I'm just like, you know what, bro? Let these fuckers have their fun today, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll get them tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I call it the Haas indicator. Whenever Harry says, like, I love this, I'm like, oh, avoiding the fuck out of that. Yeah. Not even going to look at it for and a while. That's the thing, because we want to know what everyone else is thinking, right? Because we have the mindset of a short trader. Yeah. Harry and Austin have the mindset of a long trader. And knowing as much information as possible, at the end of the day, it's just a bigger edge, man. Yeah. And especially like I'll read your watch list every single morning or what James or what Tom's looking at, just because I want the information because there's been times where I've been even in a long trade where um, like, I don't know, like a week or two ago where you said you wanted something at a level and I was in from lower and I noticed that we were having a hard time pushing past that level. And then I just looked to, and I remembered in the back of my mind, like, fuck, that was Alex's watch list. I took it off yeah. immediately. Shit just stuffed lower. I was like, shit, if I hadn't read that, I would have been crushed. The key is that we're a team, bro. We're a team. Yeah. Even though we're on opposite sides of the fucking trade, we're still a fucking team. So that's sick, man. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. What about you, James? How have you been doing in this market? Because I know that you and I have a similar style. We're both nail and bail. Take the fucking money and get the hell out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> 
Dude, I, the reality is like, I've been very consistent, which is like pretty normal for me, which is nice. But this market, I think I realized quickly, and it was right after the right after GameStop, AMC, all that shit crashed. I had that sick first red day. And then it was kind of ever since then, I've realized that these traps have been killing us, especially us nail and bail guys for some reason, because we get in and out. We always tend to have similar spots of entry and we get in. And then the next thing we know, stock's gone, or it's just, we get in at where we always would. And it just goes higher. And we've had this conversation a million times. They'll be like, bro, my fucking entries are perfect, but they're just not working. And we just say there's our markets where our style works very, very well. And then there's the markets where we have to take our foot off the gas and kind of just reevaluate. And I think something I, I made for myself is I've stopped kind of scaling big into um, any position. Like I stopped kind of scaling. Like I give myself one to two bullets, um, but really I'm only adding to a winner. And that has allowed me that I think I've had like three red days in the past couple months. And it's allowed me to keep my red days like nothing. Like dirt, small, like nothing. Like even today I had a trade, you know, I scaled in my 30% and like two bullets. And then I had a break even stop because it was, it was that BSQR. It was just, once I felt that it was playing games, I put a break even stop. Tell you something, that, bro, that break even stop saved you $2 a share, bro. Dude, seriously. It's like, and that's what it's been like. So as long as, as long as I continue to stop out when I'm wrong and I don't allow myself to get kind of an ego and think like, oh, this can't go higher because then we've seen it with, Blin, we've seen it at MRIN. These fucking things just can go higher. Yeah. And I tweeted about today, man. It's like, I know, we know how many people who can make money, but how many traders on Twitter do I see that can't fucking stop out? They can't get their ego out of the way and just say, dude, I need to take the loss and move on. Because as long as I keep my, my money in my account, I can give less of a fuck. If, it, if I lose a couple hundred bucks in a day, what do I give a shit? That's so, the biggest problem that people yeah. face. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's, I think it's ego. Ego definitely matters. I think it's also, bro, people just like, they don't fucking set their stops, bro. It's like very easy not to do it. You're like, oh, fuck it. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. I mean, if I'm totally, totally honest with you guys, I've seen so many traders come and go. I've seen fucking people making a million dollars. And then one month later, they're at literally zero. I've seen people fucking, I've seen it all, man. I really, I swear to God, I've seen it all. And the number one thing it comes down to, I, and we say it too many times, but it's risk management. These guys are not setting their max size. They're not setting a max stop. They're not setting broker levels. I am a professional trader. I've been trading. I made a million dollars last year. I'm way over a million dollars this year. And I have a max size at the broker level. I have a max loss at the broker level. And I have a time of day that I walk away. So if a millionaire trader is having all these things, someone that's a $100 trader doesn't have any excuse to not have these as well. You know? Yeah, no, yep. I definitely agree. And I think like another thing is that I see a lot of people like, um, it's like, there's a difference between like being right in the end and like making money, you know, like some people are just trading just to be right. Like, I feel like oh, I'd rather be fucking rich, bro. I don't give a fuck. Well, that, and that's how I feel <laughs> too. Right. Like, I mean, if, if you look at bow nailing and bailing every single day, like, I mean, the man's just purely in it to make money. I mean, he's scalping 30 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, right? Like that that's someone who wants to come in and make money every day. But when you have the people with oh, well, the, we have an offering and a fundamental and I'm going to get in at six and hold till four every single yeah, day. Yeah, those guys are going to learn the hard way. Bro. Right. The thing about Bao is the reason why Bao takes so much scalps is because he's a fucking lunatic, number one. And number <laughs> three, he's, he's showing you guys that every single trade that he's taking is an opportunity that you could have taken to make money. Yeah. If he's able to take that trade and make money, that means that you could take that trade and make money. And the thing about Bauer is, in my opinion, Bow trades better in a slow market because the channels are easier. Yeah. So that is something that I try to mention to Bow. I'm like, bro, hot markets are not your bread and butter. You are very good in the slow, methodical markets. Whereas for me, bro, slow market, hot market, good market, cold market, as long as I have range, I could pull out money. I can't pull out six figures every day. Yeah. But when those opportunities do come, like a GameStop yeah. or an AMC, bro, yeah. I had my fucking biggest day ever. And it's actually ironic, bro, because like, this shit came in the mail. So. Oh, it's yeah, crazy. that was not, this was not planned. But I got an Instagram ad about, like, how you can make your own, like, plaque. Thing is sick. Like a Thing memorabilia sick. plaque. And this is my AMC trade. It's yeah. You could input your shares. So I had 30,622 shares um, at a, what is it? at like an average price of $73 and I covered at $50. 
for a $700,000 win. It shows it here, but I have this now as a memory of like my biggest trade ever. So, but <laughs> I love that. You know, what's, you know what's funny about that day is I remember after you, after I locked it up for the day, I was done, I was leaving. You were like, oh, I'm up 400K. And then you go on the, the YouTube live or whatever. The IG and I can live, see you. Bro, and he's bro. like, yeah, just saying I'm up another 400. So bro, uh, I yeah. could tell, I, I literally was in my head. I'm like, this dude's still in it. Cause you're sitting there, you're talking, keep looking back. I'm like, this motherfucker is still in this thing. So I got out of it. And then bro, if this fucking shit stuck and it was starting yep. to break down and GameStop started to break down. So I was like, fuck it, dude. I'm going to put on a position. And then while I was doing the YouTube live, Instagram live, the shit plummeted. Someone's like, AMC's tank. I'm like, what? So I look back and I'm all of a sudden, bro, I'm up another quarter million dollars. And I'm like, bro, don't tell fucking Bow because he's gonna kick my ass. Yeah, bro, I was crying. That I was, was my crying, biggest man. day ever, bro. Seven hundred thousand dollars in one day, and that led up to my biggest week ever, which was a million dollar week. And the interesting part about that is this: so this year, as of June sixth, I'm up about like one point six, one point seven million, which is a lot of money. It's a great amount of money, but. 1 million of that 1.6 million happened in one fucking week. So in the market, you never know when that opportunity, when that moment is going to come. But when it does come, you have to capitalize because as much as I love AMC as a stock, as much as it's incredible, as much as it was the biggest fucking challenge of my entire trading career and I smoked it, I never want to see that fucking ticker again, bro. I get like fucking, I'm like fucking PTSD, shock, bro. I'm just like, bro, I have nightmares about going to the movie theaters now. Like, bro, what the hell? Yeah. But how perfect is it? Part of it, bro. I want how no part of it. But how perfect is that? Like, it is exactly how you have kind of taught MIC to trade. You hit, you nail and bail every day. You yeah. may, you add up gains day after day after yeah. day. And then you have those home run days that make your, your year, your month. And think about it. Let's say I didn't have that home run day. Nail and bailing, I still cleared 600,000 in half a year, bro. Yeah. So I'm on track to make a million by just nail and bailing. And that's the thing, bro. They, sure, you can make 5 million, you can make 10 million, you can make 20 million. Sure, it is possible in the market. You know, we've seen people do it. It is possible. The problem is that, like, I don't know about you guys, but instead of trading all fucking day and trying to make more money, I would rather enjoy my day. Yeah. The reason why we got into trading, guys, is for fucking freedom. You are yeah. only free when you have free time. Freedom equals free time, right? Yeah. And for me, if I'm able to trade an hour a day, work on MIC and finish my day early, that is freedom to me. Freedom to me isn't an extra Lambo. Freedom to me isn't a summer house. Freedom to me is being able to leave early, enjoy my day. And hey, if I want a day drink, if I want to go to the spa, if I yep. want to go do this, if I want to go do that, you know what? No one could tell me to do anything else because I put in my one hour of the day. I made my $5,000 and I can't literally spend it fast enough, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. I love that. And I guess this is like a pretty good segue because we just talked about how insane the market was and how much you made. And now given the sentiment, like what we're in now, how do you deal from going from like making a million dollars in a week to now dealing with these days where some days you're going to be up and you might make pennies, then you might make 10,000, 20,000, you might be down fucking money. How do you kind of switch to that? That's a good question. Man. That's a good question. Um, so what I like to do, man, is I know I mentioned it, but I like to keep my account small because the more amount of money I have in my account, the more I'm just like, shit, man, I can make a lot more money if I got fucking a hundred K in here. I can make a lot more money with a million dollars in buying power. So what happens is my brain tends to trick me. It tells me, all right, I got more money in the account. I could risk more money. And I do admit that I fucking love trading and that sometimes I'm a degenerate and I do fucking push a little bit harder than I should be because I'm very competitive. But what I've learned based on my personality, based on my personal you know, mentality is the less money I have in my account the more humble it keeps me because I could not afford to lose a big amount. I'll give you an example. When the AMC trade happened, I was like, bro, it's coming. It's fucking coming. It's fucking coming. So what I did is I wired $200,000 into my trading account. I was like, you know what? My account's 30K. This is the biggest opportunity of the year. 30K is not going to cut it. I need 200,000 in there. I need a million dollars in buying power. Yeah. Okay. I got my buying power and that's an advance. Someone that's new should not be doing that. 
I've been doing this for a very long time. So I understand which opportunities require a lot more money. So what I did is I wired in that money. I traded the stock. And when I was done with that stock, the same fucking day, I swear to God, I contacted my broker and I was like, I need a wire for half a million dollars out of my account. And they're like, sorry, you could only wire 50K out or 200K out because we got to let the trade settle. So the next day I wired out the rest of the money. So basically what I did is I took yep. that money. I instantaneously took it out of my account and voila, I was back to a $30,000 account. Like it never fucking happened. And I was back to being my humble self. So yep. oftentimes when all these guys have so much money in their accounts, it makes them very loose. It makes them very, um, lenient, very relaxed. And for me, if my account's 35,000 shit, man, I can't afford to lose more than 10,000 or my accounts under PDT. If my accounts a quarter million, I'm just going to yeah. sit here. I'm going to have my hands in my pants. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm down 50 K. I'm down hundred K. Fuck it. I still got room. And that's the problem. I did that in the past. And that is what trader maturity is about. You learn this shit after you've been there, done that. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to fucking listen to this shit because I swear to God, man, I, as much as people look up to me, as much as people think that I'm an amazing trader, I've made literally every fucking mistake yeah. that you could possibly imagine. Not once, not twice, probably five to 10 fucking times <laughs> I made that mistake because I'm retarded, you know? <laughs> No, no, bro, that's how I feel as well, though, because like when we talk about like patience and shit like that, it's like, no, like I've longed this area before, it didn't work out. I've chased this high before. That didn't work. Well, you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. And the problem is these mistakes take you five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars to lose. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to lose five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars ever again in my life. So the point is by listening to this, yeah, by understanding what we're talking about is coming from real perspective traders that are risking fucking real money every single day. I mean, you could choose not to listen, but I promise you when that day of reckoning comes, when that day that you didn't set your heart stop and your account blows up, you're going to come back and say, you know what? All I had to do was put in a hard stop and I'd be able to trade again fucking tomorrow. Do not let one stock take you out of the game forever. And AMC and GameStop took so many motherfuckers out of the game forever. And if they didn't take them out of the game, I've heard about multiple people losing fucking seven figures on those stocks, bro. And you'll and they'll never fucking talk about it. It's true. I mean, yeah. I and what's what's crazy to me about a lot of that is like, you know, you see these guys making money, so much fucking money constantly. And again, they talk about the losses, but I feel like most traders they have the the least amount of like. I don't even know how to word it. Just when they take a loss of that nature, they have trouble fucking like owning up to it or, or saying that it was their fault that fucked up or whatever. Or even but bouncing back, bro. How do you, how do you yeah. bounce back from a loss like that? You know, dude, I mean, but you do it. And that's, what's crazy about you is like, I've seen you make 700 K in a day or a million in a week, but you'll take a loss and you won't eat, And I'll call you. I'll be like, Oh dude, sick day. And you're like, dude, it's just a day in the office. Yeah. But you take a loss, and of course, you're just like, dude, I'm just pissed about the process. Yeah. I'm pissed that I fucked up the process. I'm pissed but that how I'm a fucking dipshit, bro. I'm pissed that's, that that's I let it. myself get loose. That's the fucking problem, bro. And for anyone that's struggling right now, for anyone that's not really making money right now, for anyone that's maybe bleeding out, you know, my biggest advice to you, what really helps me after losing day is, number one, I size down. So if I'm using 1,000 shares max size, on that day, I'm going to be using 500 shares max size. And my goal, bro, I swear to God, it's going to sound crazy, is you got to walk away with green by either a dollar or uh, more than just a dollar. doesn't have to be after commissions. doesn't have to be whatever. Just walk away green a dollar at least to tell yourself, you know what? That was just a fluke. I could do this because trading, when you lose, you lose your confidence. And if you lose your confidence too much, it starts to fucking spiral. So for me, uh, I think my gift as a trader um, – is that I'm able to ignore the wins and ignore the losses. I don't really get too caught up in the highs. I don't really get too caught up in the lows. And that gives me a level of equilibrium, you know? Absolutely. Harry, how do you do it? How do you handle a loss? I don't see you lose too often, but I, you he know, drinks, I know everyone. He <laughs> goes, hangs out with women. Cocaine he and strippers. watches the tape. <laughs> well, most of the time, most of the time, see a lot of my losses are, like if I do have a bigger losing day, it's because it's like, like minus 10 cents, minus 10 cents, minus 10 cents. Like yeah, yeah. Just they add up over time. It, yeah. That, yeah. that will be the only time I have a bigger green day. But now 
like I've really, really taken a lot of steps to try and like combat like my over trading because like, um, and like it hasn't really been a problem recently, but it was a problem in the past where like, like either I would get, I, I, like I would wait for a line and like it wouldn't quite get there and then I'd see it. So I'd just start chasing and like, that's the wrong way to go about things. And so I guess like what I do is like, like I, I, I limit my entries per ticker. So like, unless, unless there's like something insane that happens, you know, which there won't be long side on short side, you'll get a stop move and it's like, okay, you know, this is done. But as far as the long side, like it's more of like, okay, like you're kind of like fishing. And then if things work out, like they work out big. So I guess like, as far as like losing days, like, I mean, I keep my risk management to like on lower price stocks. Like I don't want to be risking more than 20 cents. Like that's way too much for me. Higher price. I don't want to be risking more than 30 cents. That's too much for me too. And so, I mean, that's just kind of how I've been, been doing it. And as far as like handling it, um, I'll either like take a small break or I'll just like, like I'm, a, I, 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 like I, there's a guy who, uh, who lives down like the road for me, who's also in MIC, his name's Justin Kennedy. And like, he records the tape every single day for me. So like, like <laughs> a year and a half to two to three years worth of tape from this guy. And I'll just watch that. And, and like, my girlfriend knows like, like, like not because I have a losing day, just because I'm a fucking addict. Like, that's literally what I'll do all day is I'll either like my typical day, like, because like Canada has been so like locked down for the past, like two, I'd say like not two years, but I'd say for the past year, like I've been putting in the solid, like, like maybe like seven, eight hours a day, just like either reading the tape, watching the action, doing something for- so You're for, telling um, me these entries aren't luck is what you're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah, something like that. But I mean, that's <laughs> what I've kind of been doing, um, you know? And I mean, that's what's kind of helped me is just really like putting in the screen time and really just paying close attention to what's going on, you know? Well, losses are funny. Losses are like funny in trading because I remember it used to like eat me up so much. You know, I'd take a red day and like fucking be like, fuck this shit, I'm done. I hate this shit, stupid. And like that was early on. And like now it's like almost losing days. I kind of can just laugh about it because I, I think more traders need to like normalize like losing like an average green day is like your max loss or like that not every loss has to be your max daily loss in the day. I mean, there's days where like I'll lose like a hundred bucks. Like I'll just be like, oh fuck, like I stopped out basically break even whatever and you can just walk away and it's just it's crazy to me to like that's why i love trading with all you guys because everyone can have a losing day everyone posts about it bow alex everybody and just the way they handle it without going back and like taking it out on the market taking it out on anyone else it, it's impressive and i think it's i think it's I something think that a lot of people need a routine or a process after they lose like for example when i lose or when i have a losing day you know what i shut down everything I go get myself the fucking most expensive steak I can <laughs> find. I get myself the biggest chocolate cake I can get. I stuff my face and I just eat all the pain away. I sit on, I put on like a nice Avengers movie or like a Marvel movie and I start watching TV. And you know what? All of a sudden, by the time I wake up in the morning, I say to myself, you know what? Been here before. And every time that I've been here, I've gone higher. So this is my opportunity to... Uh, excel again because in my opinion you could tell a lot about yourself and just as a person by how you come back from adversity and how you come back from losses and I've been in this game long enough to have so many big losses that I keep reminding myself and I keep telling myself our process works our process is ironclad I'm not going to win nine I'm not going to win a hundred percent of the time but that 90 percent that I win is going to more than offset that 10 percent um of these losses. So example, I lost like $80,000 in one day, like last week on MRIM. I was a fucking jackass. I over traded. I didn't use stops. I was using my ego, you know, pretty much bro. Like it's been like, I don't know, three days, four days. I'm pretty much 40%, 50%. I made the loss back. So like, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change anything. Sure. It still sucks being down 40,000, but I mean, by the time this podcast is done recording, by the time it's posted live, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make it back because our process works. So yeah. as long as, like you said, you can keep your losses under control, you don't lose more than a day or a week's worth of work. I mean, it's just a fucking another day at the office. I mean, it doesn't. It, if your process works and you're a consistent trader and you consistently make money, what the hell is there to worry about? 
what the hell is there to worry about? You should only be worried if your process doesn't work, if you're not consistent, if you're relying on someone else, if you're fucking chasing, doing all this bullshit. So, I mean, losses suck. I mean, no matter what level you get, it sucks. You know, I have a great amount of money. Bow has a great amount of money. And even if the fucker loses $10,000, he's still pissed. Because he won't, bro, go get a foot massage. Go get a fucking... Go get some fucking sushi. Go go out and go drink a little bit. Go have fun because, you know, losses also for me personally, they humble me back down and they make me realize, you know what? If my biggest problem right now is that I have like a loss, but like I'm healthy, my friends are healthy, like I'm happy, like I have all these amazing things to look forward to, it's not that bad. So try to focus on the positive, try to focus on the good. And remember, come back the next day, be green, and you'll be surprised how much your mindset's fixed. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that 100%. Um, and I think that brings us to the last point as well of like, um, you know, drawing lines as far as like tape reading goes, making a plan. Everyone wants to know about tape reading, but I mean, it, I mean, I don't know about you, but that for me, it really goes along with my plan and it goes along with experience as far as I go. Like, I'm not just going to sit and like pick a Tape reading is hard, bro. Tape reading is hard because in this day and age, the tape is very extremely manipulated. There's so much fucking manipulation happening right now that like you think you're looking at something and you think you're looking at a fish, but it's actually a fucking starfish. It doesn't, yeah. it's not a fucking star. it doesn't make it doesn't make fucking sense, right? So if you're trying to read the tape in this market, jokes on you because it's like hieroglyphics. But the only thing that works 100% ironclad is the lines and technical analysis. So in this market, you should be focusing on technical analysis. Tape reading, sure, is important, but the tape could be very manipulated. So at this point, focus on technical analysis only. I haven't been using tape at all, to be honest, because I feel like I, when I get lost in the tape and I maybe that's when I kind of get like maybe a confirmation bias. I'll be like, oh, you know, there's, there's yeah. this is a hidden seller here. There's this where in the, at the end of the day, especially in this market, like you said, the only thing that has been working is my lines. Where I get yeah, in, the algos don't the algos don't care about the tape, bro. The algos nope. just care about the fucking pattern. Yeah. And the pattern yep. is the fucking charts, dude. So if yeah. if you want to be able to make money, you gotta follow big money. Big money is the fucking algos, bro. Instead of fighting them, fucking join their side, bro. Right? Yeah. So if, if they're using technical analysis and they're manipulating the tape, you can't manipulate the tape. So use fucking technical analysis. Yeah. No, the, I agree. <laughs> bro, that's it. I mean, I think, I think in this environment too, I mean, I feel like people always tend to lean on those skills and they always say, Oh, how do you do this? What do I need to look at in the tape? What do I need to learn? And in reality, it's funny. Like I remember like on the day you made fucking 700 grand, I bet you're not staring at the tape all day. You're looking at the levels. You're saying I'm interested in levels like 50 or whatever. Bro. It's support, resistance, this, that, you know, yeah. people want to sound smarter than they are. That's really what it comes down to. People love to overcomplicate it, bro. They love to overcomplicate shit no, it's crazy um I'd we're rather... gonna do a bit of like i know there were some people who yeah let's do the audience q &A. yeah oh yeah um so i james texted me a couple hey uh, I, I actually have them up right here harry if you, if oh you yeah want. you have all of them yep yep all right so the first one um we got just like about four right here yeah. um how do you stay content uh with your gains and what's the best way to deal with greed that's funny, man. That's a good question. Um, that is a good one. Let's start with the first one. How are you content with your gains? I mean, like I said, guys, I don't really focus on the numbers too much. I mean, when I'm trading these days, I look at the P&L after the trade is closed, right? So what I do is I trade the stock, I trade the chart, I focus on the chart, I focus on my entries, I focus on my exits. I exit trade, I turn left, to look at my P&L, I'm either like, oh shit or oh fuck, right? So that's, that's, that's kind of what helps me. What helps me is I don't really get too caught up in the numbers because the numbers don't matter more than the process matters. You know, if you are focusing on your numbers, you know, you're going to be very emotional. You're going to be trading the P&L and not the fucking process. So for me, I like to trade the chart. I like to focus on my entries, focus on my exit. And then after that is when I look at the money. And additionally, I wire out that money. I put it into my bank account and I let it sit there and I'm not the type of guy that checks my bank account every fucking day. I let it sit there. I let it grow and grow and grow yeah. and grow. Um, and the second question, how do you control greed? Well, what helps me control greed is I walk away at zombie times because if not, I'll sit there all day. And because I'm greedy, I try to make a little bit more money. 
So having a set time of day or a set signal that tells you to walk away is your combat against greed because humans by human nature are greedy motherfuckers. We are greedy creatures. It is in our DNA. It is in our fucking, um, in our body. So you can't fucking fight with evolution. The only way you can fight with evolution is by walking away and turning off the thing that triggers that greed. And that's why I walk away every single day. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I I think that's the point of like having that trigger to walk away. That mm-hmm. it, and it could be over trading for some people. Like a it could be effort. anything, right? It could be let's say you give back twenty percent of your profits on the day. Have yeah. a give back rule. All right, I made a thousand dollars today. This next trade, if I lose more than two hundred, I gotta cut it and I gotta fucking walk away, and that's my punishment. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah. All right, we got a couple more here. So, do you uh, do you get performance anxiety while starting the day? Um, do you get less anxious, um, or how do you get less anxious for trades as you develop? Um, and is there a way around uh, fake outs or at least a way to get less faked out in trades? So you can attack number one first. Yeah. So how do I deal with performance anxiety? Performance anxiety is very real, especially for someone that is running a community and someone that posts their daily profits and someone that is like a mentor to other people. Sure. It does really get to me. It stresses me out a lot. Um, how do I deal with it? I mean, the way that I deal with it is I try to trick my brain and I tell myself that, you know what, even if I have a good day, even if I have a bad day, the members will appreciate me losing money more than me making money, not because they want to see me lose, but because it makes me more human, because they can relate to it more and because there's a lesson there. So in the past, I used to get upset. I used to be like, you know what, these losses suck. But nowadays, whenever I have a loss, it actually makes me happy because it shows the community and shows the world that I am indeed fucking human, you know? Um, how to deal with traps, how to deal with fucking fake outs. I mean, beats me. It's really hard <laughs> market. I mean, there's no real strategy. There's no real formula. The only way to avoid fake outs is to avoid the hot stocks because the hot stocks are the ones that are manipulated. So if you focus on the side stocks or the broken stocks, chances are they're going to be less manipulated, which is less fucking bullshit. Yeah, agreed. I agree. Perfect. Yep. And then there's just two more. Um, aside from lines, hard stop, and risk management, uh, what are the other key areas any trader should adhere to in every single trade? Zombie fucking rules, bro. Yep. Zombie rules. Yep. Everyone calls it the undead rules. They call it the vampire rules. They call it the 1030 <laughs> rule. They call it that rule. Yeah. That rule. That rule is worth millions and millions and millions of dollars that we give it away for free. And that's the craziest part about this whole thing is that you could give someone a million dollar strategy to be successful and 99% of the people will not listen. How many people in MIC are not fucking leaving at zombie times, right? How many people in the regular stock market are not leaving at zombie times? I am making $1 million by walking away. Walking away is what's keeping that money in my pocket. So the biggest advice, short trader, is walk away at 10.30. Long trader, start fucking trading at 10.30. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. The golden rule. I just gave it away again, bro. I gave it away again. <laughs> And all right, let's see. The last one we got is how do you guys deal uh, with max losses? How do you set – is it a set number? Um, how did you come up with that number? It um, should be your day's yeah. gain. If you're making $500 a day, your max loss should be $500 a day because you're like, all right, I lost 500 on Monday, Tuesday, worst case scenario, I make 250, Wednesday, I make 500, all of a sudden I'm green. The problem is people set their max loss numbers way too fucking high to a number that's going to take them months to make back. And because of that, they start over trading, they revenge trade and they start breaking the fucking process. So your max loss number should be nothing more than a day's worth of work. My current max loss number right now is about $10,000. So ten thousand dollars is what I make pretty much every day. So I don't want to lose more than ten grand because, it, thank God, if I lose ten grand, it doesn't mean anything to me. But if I lose two hundred grand, I'm gonna be a little bit fucking pissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's perfect. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that is all of the uh, Q and A questions. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I think I think this episode, if anything, to not kind of wrap it up. I mean. There's so many lessons to dive through, actually, but it really is like no matter what the market, it all boils down to, in my opinion, no matter what the market sentiment, no matter how fucking tough it is, how easy it is, whatever, it always comes down to sticking to the same process that you've traded day after day after day. Doesn't matter if you're making the hardest a million part is a week finding or whatever. That process, bro. The hardest part is finding that process 
We made it for everyone. We We did it, right? That's the hardest part. The hardest part is finding it, a winning strategy that's consistent, that pays out money, and we fucking have it, bro. My my last question to you, actually, before we even wrap it up, is why do you think most people can't stick to it? What do you think it is? I think most people don't trust it. I don't think they think that it's like, I don't think they think that it works. I don't think they think that it's as simple as setting your orders and waiting. I think a lot of people have FOMO. A lot of people don't want to miss out on the trade. A lot of people get anxiety. And because of that, they rush their entries. They rush their trades. When if they just waited and followed their plan, they would have been fine. That's how I love it. Well, I love it. Harry, you have anything to wrap it up with? Uh, I mean, not really. We got a lot in this little I mean, interview. It was pretty straightforward interview. And I mean, yeah. it's exactly yeah. what you'd expect. You know, it's just, you know, someone who's been trading for a while. Yeah. And I've been trading way too fucking long, bro. I'm turning <laughs> 27. So that means I've been trading for almost eight years now. Yeah. Jesus and I mean, Christ, it's bro. just, it's someone who's been trading for a while and who's willing to kind of share. Well, for this dude, I'm going to be trading for a fucking decade, bro. I'm going to yeah. be like fucking. Dude, bro, Bowser been trading for two fucking decades. I've been trading for a decade. What the fuck, bro? Where's yeah. That? Oh. That's scary. Dude, I mean, I've been trading for three years now. And like, yeah, I feel like bro, NYC bro. started yesterday, dude. Fine, yesterday. Man. It's disgusting. I hate it. <laughs> it's funny. But, anyways, Alex, thank you for coming on, man. Every time you come on, is a bunch of fucking golden nuggets. So I'm sure this will be one of everyone's favorites. So thank you. You guys you again. gotta get Bow back on and you guys yeah, have fucking Tosh on, bro. Yeah. Oh, oh, cool. I mean, we try with Tosh, but Bow, I think he's coming on soon. So that's good. No, awesome. Bow will come on. Tosh is too busy with the ladies, dude. He's yeah, fucking Tosh, busy. Tosh, break, break Bow's balls a little bit while he's on there. All right. Oh, yeah. We got him. We got Fuck him. him up a little bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my man. Thank you again. And I'm sure we'll have you back on it soon. Cool. I'll see you guys. Yeah.